again. Again. Hello everybody and welcome. This here is my attempt to refuel my 100 meter refueling station, the Franz, which you have already seen in the previous video. In order to do that, I thought I'd take the brute force approach and use another spaceship to transfer my station to Minmus to refuel it and then get it back to orbit around Kerbin. Well, to stay in the theme of classical composers, I named this beauty the Giuseppe, named after Giuseppe Verdi, who was not really a contemporary of Franz Schubert, after which I named the station, because, well, Schubert died about 13 years after Giuseppe Verdi was born, so yeah, there are not a lot of things that they could have done together. Anyhow, in order to get this station landed safely on Minmus, we need some gear, and that is this little part that is docking here. It also contains the drills to excavate the ore needed to create more fuel. This is now the Giuseppe docking at the top docking ring of the Franz. There we go. For it not to explode as you have seen before, I have to turn off a few of those big vector engines, otherwise yeah, this entire thing is completely unstable and will explode at the first attempt of acceleration. Alright, after a very slow and tedious burn, because if I would have activated physical time warp during the burn, everything would have exploded again. We are now closing in on Minmus, well after some beauty shots and another adjustment of our orbit. There we go, this looks better. Alright, time to say goodbye to Kerbin. There's a little passage of the moon and here we are at Minmus, our tiny little refueling moon around our main planet. Okay, we're doing a retrograde burn to get circularized and then I'm trying to set this thing down at one of the planes. So this has to get very flat, we have to level it out really accurately in order to set down gently. And of course we have to adjust our inclination a bit so we actually land on that plane. The goal here was to reduce the vertical velocity as much as I can, so I dropped the entire assembly down, really just vertically, and then I would switch to the vertical engines, there you have them, at the bottom of the entire Giuseppe construct. Setting down slowly and you will not as successfully as I had intended. Well, since this weighs a lot of tons, a lot of thousands of tons actually, you really have to set it down really gently. Again! And of course, it's time to try again, and after a few failed attempts, here we go, we have landed back really on the literal dime. Okay, the drills are all active, and we're drilling for that mighty fine ore and activating our refineries and of course also the fuel cells so that we can generate our fuel during the night as well. After a little montage, which looks almost like a sundial, we have finished and things keep wobbling even more. So, really gently trying to get this behemoth off of the surface of Minmus, which was not an easy task, I might add. Not as easy as it looks in this video. There you see Kerbin in the backdrop, that's where we want to go again. 
Once we have reached sufficient height, we're going to switch to our horizontal engines and then of course blast into orbit and back into Kerbin Sphere Influence. I really hope I have enough fuel without using up all the fuel in stored inside of the Franz and the Giuseppe. Okay, this is looking okay. I have to lift my prograde vector a bit more. But so far things look more stable than I imagined, to be honest. One more beauty shot of the assembled carrier and station construct. And once we've reached Apoeps, we're going to circularize and then head back to Kerbin. Pretty standard fare. Except that we're carrying a hundred meter diameter, 400,000, well, not 400, 4,000 ton space station with us. The funny thing, or well, the lucky coincidence, was that I got an encounter with the moon and I could use that for a gravity assist, so I would not use as much delta V as I initially anticipated. So the plan now was to slingshot around the moon, use its gravity to slow down and lower our periaps closer to Kerbin, and then of course circularize around our home planet. Okay, we're now trying to hit the sphere of influence of the moon. Almost there, and yes, slowly getting there. All oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Yes, there we go. Okay, the moon is helping us out. We say goodbye to Minmus. Bye, Minmus. And while we pass Kerbin, we have already caught a glimpse of the moon and we're passing by this nice little planetoid thingy. In order to get my circularization burn a lot uh, more efficient, I've lowered, I'm going to lower the periaps to about 85, 80 something uh, kilometers. And this is really a nice picture. Kerbin completely engulfed by the fronts. I think I have to make a desktop image of that or something. Okay, so we're now on our way we did some inclination adjustment and now while the sun rises above the horizon of Kerbin we are burning precious fuel to get circularized. Of course due to the mass of this entire vehicle and the lack of thrust to weight ratio I had to do multiple passes until I reached this final orbit here. This looks good, we're almost in the same place we were before. And yeah, now another tedious thing has to happen. I'm going to transfer a lot of fuel from Giuseppe to the Franz. And this took the better part of an hour, I think, or something, just clicking through all of those context methods. Yeah. Fun times! Alright, after we did that I decided to do the separation once again back in sunlight because I really like to see what I'm doing, to be honest. Okay, Giuseppe has decoupled from Franz and now it's trying to head back to Kerbin. Goodbye, Giuseppe. Goodbye, Franz. It was nice meeting you. I forgot the drill assembly, but ah, who cares about that? Okay, we're trying to get a re-entry vector close to at least some land mass. We do have landing capabilities with the vertical vector engines, but aerodynamics kind of pulls a prank on us. And we're heading down, not really as I intended, to be honest. And we're losing stuff in the process. Hmm. This is maybe not such a good idea as I have thought in the beginning. Oops, okay, 
the, well, with those nacelles gone, there goes the idea of landing vertically. So the only hope we have left is to use our main engines to slow down enough so that we don't crash in a lethal way. But that seems highly unlikely if you look at the delta-v numbers in the top-hand display and the amount of velocity we have to kill. There we go, we're trying, we're trying to slow down, but yeah, fuel's out and we're dead. Hmm. Well, there has to be a more efficient way to refuel my refueling station. What should I do? Well, you're going to get the answer soon. For the meantime, thanks for watching. Goodbye.